I tested out five more battle map makers to find out which one is the easiest, including two that come with cyberpunk and medieval assets built in, and one that has a completely unique workflow, unlike any other map maker I've tried. But first, I want to tell you that this video is sponsored by Improved Initiative. It was the fastest I've ever said yes to a sponsorship because I already use and love it, but more on that later. Welcome to the table. I'm Kelly, and we're going to make some very rushed battle maps. Again. I've said it before, but in my prep I try to make things as easy and quick as possible so that I can spend more time thinking about the stories in my campaigns. There are so many incredibly talented and creative map makers out there, so if I'm going to make my own maps, the process has to be really fun and easy, otherwise I might as well just use pre-made maps. That's why this comparison focuses on speed and ease of use. I give myself 30 minutes to get familiar with each map maker, and then 10 minutes to make a map. And because this is for TTRPGs, I made myself some roll tables to determine exactly what I needed to make. And thank you to Paladin Roleplaying for sending me these dice. I used the Metal D6 set to roll on the tables for this video and they feel very nice. Now this is by no means an exhaustive review. It's more intended to introduce you to map makers that you might not be familiar with, so you can explore each of them further on your own. All of these tools are capable of creating fantastic maps if you put in the time to get to know them. Each of these map makers have a showcase page and there are some incredible examples of what can be done with them. But I want to find out which is the easiest to pick up and get started with, so I can start creating good looking maps without having to invest too much time. First up is a mostly free map maker that prides itself on simplicity and ease of use. But once I dug into it a bit, I was really surprised at how in-depth and capable it was. It says it right on the homepage, old school dungeon maps made easy. And today we are going to use it to make very much not that. An urban setting with a house on the sea. Dungeon Scrawl excels at simple, printer-friendly, old-school style dungeon maps, and we're going to use it for something that it is completely not designed for. Great. Dungeon Scrawl is a browser-based map maker that has all the core features available for free, and a pro tier which is $7 per month. They were just recently acquired by Roll20, but according to posts by both companies, nothing will change except that there will be better integration of Dungeon Scrawl into Roll20. The free tools contain everything you need to make some really cool maps. We'll just use the wall tool to kind of fill this in. On the surface, Dungeon Scrawl is just an old school dungeon map maker, but once you dive into it, it actually contains all the tools you need to make pretty much any kind of map. The ability to add different layers means you have a lot of flexibility for mixing the different styles available. You can go in and tweak all the settings within the pre-made styles as well, and the built-in assets allow you to add some nice finishing touches. You can also upload your own assets to truly make whatever type of map you want. Some nice bay windows, actually. What a fancy house. If you're using Dungeon Scrawl as it's intended to make old school dungeon maps, then I have no notes. It's fantastic. It's not really fair to critique it based on what I was using it for, but I'm gonna do it anyway. The thing I struggled with most while using it was if you aren't making dungeon maps or extremely simple maps, then you have to get creative with workarounds, which can be time consuming. This is a great cobblestone street. Just turn off the walls. Not having a brush tool was the source of a lot of my problems. The hatching options are so cool, I just wish you could brush them onto a layer without having them connected to a wall. My favorite thing about Dungeon Scrawl is its clean and unintimidating UI. This is the only map maker in this video that I jumped straight into using without watching any tutorials. I did end up watching a couple of videos for ideas on using it in more advanced ways, but the majority of my learning was done just by playing around, and I love that. How accessible it is, is another huge strength. It's available in your browser, so there's no need to install anything Thing and you don't even have to make an account to start using it. Finally, the passionate community and developer behind it are great. They have an extremely active Discord where you can get all kinds of inspiration and the developer is constantly adding new features and improvements. All right. I mean, it's pretty basic, but for 10 minutes using it completely not what it's designed for, um, I'm gonna say that's pretty good. This next one was the most requested map maker from my last video. Okay, Grassland, Church Pond, Tailspire, Speed is not a strong suit, it's really cool but it's not fast. Um, Alright, let's see what I can do in 10 minutes. 
Tailspire is a 3D map maker and VTT that came out in April 2020. It has been used extensively on Dimension 20 and it has over 3,000 reviews on Steam. It aims to replicate the feeling of physical terrain pieces and minis by using a block-based approach similar to the terrain sets from companies like Dwarven Forge. This block-based approach definitely sets it apart from the other map makers and definitely makes it feel closer to building with physical terrain. This approach makes it both easier and harder to use. Even though the interface is fairly simple, I started with a tutorial right away. It's pretty much impossible to use without knowing the shortcut keys, so starting with a tutorial to learn those is a must. Luckily, there are tons of great ones out there. I watched this tutorial by Astalri Astra and I learned a ton. Compared to using terrain, wall, and portal tools in the other programs, placing blocks in Tailspire is quite slow. All right, this is gonna be a pretty small church. Just like a little mini church. And going into this, I didn't think I stood a chance of building a map in 10 minutes. But after I finished my 30 minute intro with two short tutorials under my belt, I was feeling pretty confident. We got for furniture. We have pews? How do you, how do you spell pew? Oh. Oh. Bench. There is something extremely satisfying about browsing through and placing the blocks. The art style makes them look like little physical pieces, which just makes me want to collect them all. It's a good thing there aren't any microtransactions in here, otherwise I'd be very poor. Speaking of which, Tailspire has a one-time purchase price of $25, and it's available on Steam for both PC and Mac. So far, all of the content packs have been free, and a new one comes out every month. Oh no. Oh no, the benches are floating. Okay. Uh, oh god. Oh no. This has gone terribly wrong. It works best if everyone at your table has a copy of Tailspire, then everyone can move their own minis, measure distances, and zone out looking at all the fun details in the maps. That being said, you absolutely can use Tailspire for your group with just one copy. If you play in person and run a player view screen at your table, you can just move the camera and minis around for your players. If you play online, you can share your screen in Discord, or whatever you use, and move the pieces around for those that don't have a copy of the program. We have altars? Oh, that is pretty intense. This is a pretty intense church, okay? It's kind of like a death shrine. Oh yeah, this is for the blood. I think that's for the where the blood goes. Oh boy. All right, well, you know, whatever. Initially, I struggled with the UI and shortcuts, but after spending a bit of time with it and watching a tutorial, I felt comfortable. Although, I could see it being intimidating and frustrating to try to learn without the use of any tutorials. The next potential downside is that you are stuck with the blocky style that this produces. If you don't like the look of emulated physical terrain blocks, then this isn't for you. Currently, there isn't a native way to import your own assets. There are some workarounds using mods, but it definitely isn't a core feature yet. This means that you're pretty much stuck using the included assets, but that does lead me directly into what I think is one of Tailspire's biggest strengths, and that is asset availability. There are a staggering number of tiles and assets in there for several different genres. There are medieval assets, modern assets, and sci-fi slash cyberpunk assets. There are currently 280 minis and 2100 tiles and objects, with more being added every month. There's also Hero Forge integration, so you can make your own minis and easily bring them in. The second major strength is the community. Generally, Tailspire has been very well received and a passionate community has been built around it, which means there are a ton of community-made maps available to use. After a recent update, it's now possible to share and search for maps directly in Tailspire. There are also large repositories of maps on Tails Tavern and Tails Bazaar. The third major strength of Tailspire is that I just found it really fun. Now that's obviously very subjective, but it brought me back to the days of building Lego and playing with army men and matchbox cars and all those little fantastical scenarios I used to make. Okay, well, Honestly, I'm pretty surprised at how well that went. Um, Tailspire is not quick, uh, but I mean, I made a basic battle map in 10 minutes, so I guess it's kind of quick. This next program was also fun to use, and it has a unique feature that I haven't seen in other map makers. Have you ever built a map for a campaign, then started a new campaign in a different genre and wanted to reuse that map? Or perhaps found a map online that's made for medieval fantasy, but you play cyberpunk? What if you could just change the genre of a map with a button click? Well, Kronos Builder seeks to solve that problem. But first, no matter which of these map makers you use, you're gonna need an initiative tracker to actually run your combat. Which is why I wanna tell you about the sponsor 
sponsor of today's video, the free and truly excellent initiative tracker, Improved Initiative. Improved Initiative is called an initiative tracker, but it does so much more. It has, without exaggeration, doubled the speed of my combat, which means my players spend less time waiting around between their turns and more time actually getting to play. While I tell you about the rest of my favorite features, I'm going to do a side-by-side -side comparison of manually setting up and running a round of combat and running it through Improved Initiative. Setting up an encounter is quick and easy. You can save all of your player characters with different folders for different campaigns. Improved Initiative comes preloaded with all the SRD content, and you can add in any other content that you own, either manually or through bulk import. All the core features are free, but if you sign up for the Patreon, you can make sure all of your manually added content is backed up and available on any device that you sign into. You can also get access to the D&D Beyond importer, so you can easily import any content you own straight from D&D Beyond. Having the monster stat blocks available right in the initiative order is by far my favorite feature. I used to have a tab open for every stat block and clicking through all of them to find the monster I was looking for was time consuming. Now all the stat blocks are available right from the initiative and I can even roll directly in improved initiative by clicking on any stat. Head to the link down in the description to start using improved initiative and make combat easier on yourself. Alright, now let's get to Chronos Builder. Okay, a desert guard tower with some pools of water around. Desert guard tower pools. All right, good stuff, good stuff. All right, great start. Definitely could have just used the bucket tool, oops. Chronos Builder was released on Steam in December of 2022, costs $45, and is available for Windows and Mac. It's a 3D map maker for sci-fi, cyberpunk, Victorian, Eastern, and medieval settings. This definitely sets it apart from the plethora of map makers that are only geared towards medieval D&D settings. Chronos Builder has only 29 reviews on Steam, and they are mixed. One reviewer wrote that they think the game should have been released under early access, and I would have to agree. It was released as a finished product last year, but has since received a ton of updates and improvements that have made it much more usable. I found the UI in this one a little frustrating, so getting started with a tutorial is a must. Although, there have been significant UI changes since launch, so I wasn't able to find a tutorial with the latest UI and features. Despite some bugs, Chronos Builder is absolutely usable, and has come a long way in a short period of time. The developers are very active, and there have been a constant stream of patches and updates since the launch. They just launched version 2 of Chronos Builder, and the core features, including multi-level maps, came as a free update. The new content packs are available as DLC for purchase. We can make it multiple floors, which is very cool. Okay, let's go up one level and I'm just gonna do the same thing again. Oh, what happened there? The thing I struggled with most while using Chronos Builder was the UI, and although it is a massive improvement over the original UI, it wasn't naturally intuitive to me, and there weren't enough obvious tool tips or helpers. Stairs. How do we do stairs? Oh boy. I think Chronos Builder would benefit from an in-depth tutorial series made by the developers. The auto builder tools didn't feel as polished as some other map makers I've tried, and the object placement felt a little bit random. Ah, oh, the door is over here. Okay, that's not great. The terrain tools were pretty good, but they were very much tied to the grid, which left some blocky and unnatural looking terrain changes that felt out of place. Now for the strengths, and Chronos Builder definitely does have its strengths. Oh, the nature paintbrush is excellent. That's great. Just a desert paintbrush, that's very good. If you play sci-fi or cyberpunk games, then this is a great option. There are very few 3D map makers out there that come with sci-fi and cyberpunk assets, so this is really where Chronos Builder sets itself apart. They are also constantly adding more genres, like the recently released Norse assets and Western assets are coming next. These will come at a cost though. Being able to change out a map style with the click of a button is very cool. It didn't always work, but when it did, it was very cool. I wonder for these guards to sleep in this guard tower. They also can't get upstairs, but that's okay. One bed. You guys can share. I'm sure they'll continue to improve the auto builder and the Chronos button functionality, which will make this a truly great option. The third strength, which is thanks to a fairly recent update, is the ability to share and download community maps directly within the program. The community is fairly small at the moment, but having this feature built in early on is great to see. Overall, Chronos Builder is very promising, and it's come a long way in a year. I know that they'll continue to develop and improve it, and I'm looking forward to seeing where it's at in another year. Not bad. This is a guard tower. Two floors in the desert. 
with some pools of water. Just some nice, uh, nice natural feature. I do like being able to make a two floor map or more. You can just keep on going up and up and up, which is cool. So you could build terrain elements. Do like that. The map maker with the most unique workflow that I've ever experienced is still to come. But first is a map maker that was built with a very specific play scenario in mind and has a surprising number of features outside of just making maps. This is the only map maker in this video that I did not pay for. Nathan the developer sent me a copy of the program but there was no obligation to make a video. Three, two, one, okay, a forest hideout stream hideout in a forest with a stream arkan forge released their public alpha in 2018 and the program is available from their website with either their fantasy starter pack or their sci-fi starter pack for 35 dollars just like the rest of these programs arkan forge is developed by a small team of passionate ttrpg players it does set itself apart from the pack in a couple of ways though it was developed with sci-fi and medieval fantasy content right from the start and it was specifically developed for groups playing in person using a screen for battle maps at its core arkan forge is a really solid 2D animated battle map maker. You can make curved walls, which is kind of cool. So, I don't know, maybe these are some bowed logs. But it also has a whole VTT system designed for running in-person games using a screen, including touchscreen support, if you're lucky enough to have a D&D table with a built-in touchscreen. It also has built-in dice rolling, initiative tracking, and note-taking capabilities. But I didn't use any of those, I just used the map maker. My experience started off a little bumpy with some issues with the launcher. I installed it on both my PC and my Mac and had issues with both. It kept saying that there were errors and that it sent logs to the devs, even though I had just opened it for the first time and hadn't touched it. Anything. I then tried to install the map maker, or the toolkit as they call it, and the essentials pack. It said it was installing, but there weren't any progress bars and nothing was happening. I restarted the program a couple of times, and then it installed and updated correctly. Luckily, you only have to go through that process one time. Once the program was installed, I didn't have any issues. The UI wasn't immediately intuitive, and I know I've said that for all of these except for dungeon scroll, but as soon as tools are inside submenus, it's not immediately obvious how everything works. Luckily, Arkham Forge has produced a a really excellent and detailed tutorial series on how to use the program, including basic and advanced use cases. I was able to skim through a bunch of these in my 30 minute time with the program and learn some more advanced techniques like the layer blending. That's something that I definitely would not have figured out on my own. I'll layer on two textures over top of each other. Layer two textures to kind of give it some more variation. The window and door tool doesn't break up a wall automatically like it does in some other map makers, but the fact that you can split walls at any point was a great compromise. There are a ton of different tools, including the ability to add round or bowed walls, scatter object tools, automatic lighting, and customization of assets right in the program. All right, five minutes. Let's see here. They got, they got a floor. They got a floor in there. And there's a hideout, but you know, it's a nice hideout. These are some fancy bandits. The Essentials Asset Pack felt like it had lots of textures and objects in it, but there are other packs available for purchase in their marketplace. You can also easily add your own asset. The thing I struggled with most was the terrain blending. Although the texture layering was cool and it allowed you to blend different textures, I wish there was some more automatic blending between different ground textures. I'd also love to see some automatic blending between the ground and water textures. Some of the other map makers I've tried blend between water and land and between ground textures automatically, which allows you to get nicer looking terrain with little effort. I just have a straight up a fire inside. Oh, actually, this is a nice fireplace. No, that's too nice. They just straight up, they just straight up have a campfire. Oh, look at that. Okay, oh my god, three minutes. Arkan Forge's strengths are the in-depth tutorials made by the developer, the amount of in-depth object customization, and the animated assets. All right, well, the animations are really cool. And that has everything. That's forest hideout, trees, forest, hideout, kind of log cabin thing, and a stream. There's no bridge, so you just kind of got to wade through it. But hey, it's a 10 minute map, so it's not bad. The last map maker in this video certainly feels the most unique because of its workflow and UI. And after spending this time with it, I'm still not sure whether I actually like it, but I'm definitely intrigued by it. Three, two, 
All right, a forest again with a shop and a stream. Dragon Map Maker is available on Steam for $35. It's still in early access with a planned release in 2023, but 2023 is quickly coming to an end, so we'll see if that happens. Dragon Map Maker is kind of a hybrid between a 2D and a 3D application, which means that it functions almost unlike anything I've used. And then another door inside. We'll just do default door. Who are we trying to impress? Many of the applications I've used feel like they rely on the shorthand that you learn from using programs like Photoshop in 2D or something like Blender or Unreal Engine in 3D. But the way you do things in this program feels completely different, unlike anything I've used before, and it really hurt my brain at first. For example, I'm used to scrolling through a library of walls and then placing or drawing those wall pieces. But in Dragon Map Maker, you select a layer, draw some generic walls, and then apply what they call a theme to those walls to make them look a certain way. This forces you to break down the map making process into different steps and do each one separately. First the general layout, then the terrain, then figuring out what the buildings look like, and then adding detail. After watching a few tutorials, this all started to click, and again, the developers have made some really excellent and in-depth tutorials that explained everything. Just as a side note, every developer should make a tutorial series on how to use their software. It makes such a huge difference in picking up a new piece of software, and it allows you to learn so much faster if the person who built it can just explain it to you. Okay, gotta add a water plane. Oh, okay. I don't like the ocean, but all right, whatever. I'll go with this. After my 30 minutes of getting to know the program, I did feel comfortable with it and the flexibility of this workflow became quite apparent. Being able to easily change the stylings of rooms or other features at will is a really neat concept. For example, you can put all of your bedrooms on one layer and then change the appearance of all of them at once. You can also get very detailed with the customization of all the assets, right down to the color of the doorknobs. Right now, the amount of themes and assets is limited, but it's growing with each update. At this time, you can't add your own assets, but that is a plan feature. The thing I struggled with most was the UI and the workflow. Everything is just very different from every other application that I've used, right down to the camera movement. In almost every other 3D application I've used, you click and hold the mouse wheel and then move the mouse around to pan the camera. In Dragon Map Maker, you hold the space bar and then use the left and right mouse buttons to move the camera. They both work great, but learning new habits was difficult at first. That being said, I only spent 30 minutes with the application and was already getting the hang of it, so it really wouldn't be an issue long term. Okay, well, this isn't really a stream. <laughs> this is my bad. It's definitely the ocean, but whatever. The biggest strength of Dragon Map Maker is the results it produced. It was just hard to make a bad looking map. The terrain materials look really nice and blend really well together, and the terrain elevation changes are nice and smooth. All the assets look nice, and the renders it produces look excellent. The short amount of time that I spent with Dragon Map Maker definitely intrigued me and made me want to go back and explore it more. All right, well, aside from it, the accidental ocean uh, you know pretty good we don't have any furniture inside but i mean we do have furniture we have stuff Got a lot of stuff got this uh antlers hanging in the window horns a lot of horns nice that's good yeah you know what 10 minutes again pretty good there are a lot of great options in here, but I think my two favorites from the last maps video still hold up. If you want to see five more battle map makers and which two have been my favorites so far, you can watch this video here. I appreciate you.